You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Hello, everyone. This is Constance Arnold, host of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. And, of course, this is the Law of Attraction radio network. And I'm so grateful uh, that you've joined me from all over the world. And, of course, I'm coming to you from a beautiful, sunshiny springtime Atlanta, Georgia. So grateful that you've joined me today. I don't believe it's an accident I believe that the Spirit of God has attracted you here, especially during these times, so that you can receive the hope, uh, the inspiration, and the motivation uh, that you really uh, have been praying and seeking for. And so uh, I really believe that your life will never be the same again today after listening to this show. Well, how are you doing? Boy, a lot is going on in the world, right? Uh, And this show was designed 11 years ago to make sure that every week that I am bringing you hope and today is no exception. Well, how am I doing? Well, it has been a challenging, interesting time. Uh, Like all of you, uh, this is uh, something that we have never experienced in Atlanta. Uh, We are practicing being sheltered in. That means that we can go to the store. We can, you know, go to the supermarket. We can go outside and walk, but uh, a lot of stuff has been shut down. So I'm going to be saying a prayer over all of you uh, before I really bring on my guests later on in the show. I want to let you know I've been thinking and praying about you. Uh, As most of you know, I have clients all over, so I've been coaching them. And so I, I'm getting a real-time feel for what it's like in the UK, London, uh, Paris, uh, my clients in Australia, uh, you know, in Tokyo, and in the US. I mean, it's, it's so interesting to see what's happening globally. And I think that one thing that this is showing all of us is that we're all one and that we need each other. It doesn't matter black, white, rich, poor, male, female, young, old, we're all in one of vibration. And so this is an opportunity for you to ask the spirit to wake you up, to show you what's going on with you since a lot lot of you are practicing being sheltered in. That's what we call it in the U.S. or being locked in or mandated to be in. You're working from home and it's different for you. You might be home with your children, home with your spouse. I, I, I said jokingly, boy, a lot of stuff is going on with spouses that aren't really connected. So now you happen to be in a home or in a house where maybe there may have been some friction. Look at this as a great opportunity. You know, there were so many uh, companies and millionaires birth out of the out of the depression and out of crisis. So leave yourself open for God to speak to you. And I'm going to pray over you. Also, um, I want you to go to YouTube. I've made some free video manifestation um, videos for you. And and I think I sent out three this week and they're free. So go to YouTube and my beautiful assistant, Miss Christy. She's made some beautiful pictures so that while you're looking at it, you're really uh, being inspired. And the wording is there so you can sit, meditate, be still. So some of the meditations on how to find your new job, uh, prosperity, well-being and peace, stability, success, you name it. <laughs> That's just my gift to the world. 
And what else? Make sure you follow me on social media, LOA Constance. Uh, you can screenshot that and then you can just tag me uh, on Instagram, LOA Constance. And on Facebook, well, I'm, I'm glad I remembered this. On Facebook, I want to remind you that I am doing live Facebook maybe three times a week where I'm answering your questions. Uh, I'm coming on live. So that is another place where you can find me, Coach with Constance. And uh, somebody asked me, am I still coaching? And I said, yes. And the interesting thing is I've been very sensitive about that. But I've had so many people reach out to me because they want to recreate themselves or learn how they can make the best of a crisis that they're in. And yes, I'm still open to coach. I had one lady who wanted to fly in and we decided, no, we're not going to do that. So we did our VIP via Skype. So I can do Skype or Zoom. So check it out uh, on my website, fulfillingyourpurpose.com. So Let's let me say a prayer over you before I give you these quick tips. Father God, great creator, the divine, all that there is. I pray over everyone who's listening. They might feel alone, feel isolated, scared. I pray that you would really shower your shalom peace on everyone who is listening. Open up our hearts and spirit and give us the revelation that you are our source, you are our surplus, and you are our unlimited supply. I declare and decree healing and wholeness, body, soul, and spirit over everyone who's listening. I call forth hope, uh, great anticipation. And the miraculous in the lives of everyone who's listening. Amen. And so it is. All right, guys, let me take a sip of water. I'm going to give you three quick tips. I can't remember. Did I tell you who my guest is going to be? Let me tell you. The one and only Simon T. Bailey. And T stands for terrific. Uh, He is awesome. He's going to be talking about how to restart, recreate, and reemerge during a crisis. That sounds juicy, doesn't it? And so uh, before I I have him to come on, I'm going to give you three things. And remember, I'm just reminding you of what you already know. So these are universal practices that if you will employ them, when you employ, you go to work, when you employ something, you make it to work, you can use it through this experience. So guys, I've been sneezing. So if I, if I have to sneeze, I'm telling y'all in advance. Okay. The first thing we already know that God is with us. We may not feel it or know it, but God is with all of us. The first thing I want to talk about is attention. We're talking about what you can control, right? You can control your attention or what you look at. So my question to you is, where have you been spending your attention? Wow. Has it been on TV? Has it been just looking at Netflix? I don't have anything against Netflix, but where have you been spending your attention and how has that been prospering you? Because what has your attention has your life. I need to say that again. Whatever has your attention has your life. Because you're always thinking ahead of your evidence. Your thinking always precedes your thinking and whatever you're giving your attention to. It precedes or comes before evidence of manifestation. So if you want to manifest abundance and a healthy body and a great new career, have you been attending to that? You know, the Bible says to attend to my word. Or attend to truth and wisdom. And when you do, you will become prosperous. 
The Bible also says meditate in truth day and night, and then you will make your way prosperous. It didn't say God would make your way prosperous. It said you would make your way prosperous. So we're talking about what can you do? You can't control your attention. And and you don't have to be ruled by what's going on all over the world. I know it's tempting. Uh, you know, I look at the news, I get information, but it doesn't rule my life. Because you have to remember your your attention is a precious commodity. Commodity. So attention is the first thing that you can control. Let's take it the second thing. These are three things that I'm reminding you that you can intentionally do during this crisis. The second one is your thinking. Wow. I said earlier, your thinking always precedes your evidence of manifestation. Thinking makes it so as you think. Think, so are you. Thoughts become things. You are asking every day with your thoughts. So what have you been thinking about? Have you been thinking about, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. What if you change that and begin to think about Wow, this is a great opportunity. I told you last week, the word crisis really means opportunity. God, show me the opportunity here. As within, so without. So the Bible says, choose whatever is lovely, whatever is a good report. Because remember, you are a thinking, feeling being. So I want you to begin to think from your best life and get in the vibration of that. Begin to think, wow, when I go back to my company, because I've been online for these two weeks, taking this certification, I'm going to really be able to bring solutions. Begin to think about, wow, since I am working from home, that gives me more opportunity to exercise. Begin to think about, I think now is a great time for me to go back to school and I'm going to do that. Begin to think about, wow, this is a great time for me to enrich my marriage. I'm going to write down all of the great things about my partner and begin to think on those. Everybody see that because you can control what you think moment by moment. I heard somebody say the other day, we really miss the miraculous because we're missing moments. The miraculous doesn't have to be spectacular. So if you're in the moment or mindfulness, you can look outside like I'm doing right now at this beautiful tree and just say, wow, that's a beautiful green tree. God is great. The next moment, wow, that's a spectacular tree because God is in the moments of your being. That's a whole nother show and I don't have time for it. Everybody see that? Okay, and then the last thing we're talking about the three things that you can do is visualization or images. If you want something different, begin to get new visions for new adventures. We know that your subconscious is most impacted by images with emotion. Begin to get an image of what you want your life to be like after this crisis. Pull your vision board off of your wall. Look at your mind movie. Create a mind movie. Begin to visualize where you're going to go with your family this summer. Begin to go what you visualize what your next trip is going to be. Begin to visualize what dress you're going to wear at the next big event. Begin to visualize your dream job. So what are you allowing yourself to see morning, noon, and night? So what you're going to do is you're going to move in and think from your imagination. You know, when you move in, when you move into a house, you move in. You stay there. You live there. So you're going to move in and begin to live from that emotion. So you're not and that imagination. So you're not going to say one day I'm going to the beach. You're going to move in and see yourself on the beach, 
feel and see yourself putting on your sunscreen. Feel the wind coming from the waves. Hear the waves beating up against the beach. Everybody see that? Even for that moment when I was sharing that with you, I was living from the end. So you're going to move in and to begin to feel an image from the end. You're imaging better than than the best. You're imaging whatever is good, whatever is lovely, whatever is a good report. What do you see yourself doing in your imagination? And as I said, new visions for new adventures. You know, the imagination is so powerful. As I said earlier, when you imagine something consistently with emotion and with images and with feeling, it's processed through your brain 60,000 times faster. Wow. Is that powerful or what? And so while you are at home, Watch how you spend your attention because it is really precious. Watch your thinking begin thinking things that are lovely or good report or wonderful and then begin visualizing. And, you know, get your iPhone out and just set it for 10 minutes and just begin to dream. What do you want your life to be like? You don't you don't have to know how, but just begin to think about it. Begin to write it down in detail. Begin to put your attention on that. Begin to visualize. Begin to feel it. Begin to be grateful for it even before it manifests in your life because you can control your attention, you can control your thinking, and you can control your visualization. You know, I had two big speaking things that were canceled because of what's going on. So I've been imagining, we're going to reschedule, but I've been imagining myself standing in front of them and, and them saying to me, wow, Constance, this was just the best leadership training I've ever been to. And everybody's waiting to speak to me. And and the um, at the end where they do the evaluations, everybody said, wow, this really changed my life. I'm going to really be able to help my employees that I supervise with this. You see that? I'm dreaming. I'm thinking. I'm feeling. Another thing that I'm doing since I am locked in, I'm doing more walking because I'm walking in my neighborhood. I'm walking in the morning. It's not too hot here yet. I'm walking in the afternoon. I'm walking in the evening and I'm just seeing my body change. And I'm saying to myself, girl, you're getting finer and finer. I don't know if that's such a word. I'm seeing myself because my gym is closed, right? I'm seeing myself slip into that black dress and look so wonderful. And y'all know where I'm coming from. And so while I'm walking, I'm imagining. Uh, I'm imagining getting toner, slimmer, you know, all of the above. So you have the time, but you have to choose where you're going to put your attention, what you're going to think about. And what you're going to visualize, because really you are God in the earth doing this crisis and you choose. All right, everybody, uh, that's so powerful. I'm going to listen to it myself. So we're going to go to these uh, quick commercials and then I'm going to come back with the one and only Mr. Simon. Terrific belly. Everybody stay tuned. Do you have an upcoming event where you need a dynamic speaker? Constance Arnold is a sought-after keynote speaker that will enlighten the entire audience with proven strategies that are aligned with your organization's vision and mission. An experienced speaker for major Fortune 500 companies, Constance has entertained audiences with inspiring change. Constance would love to make your next event an extraordinary success. Contact her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. For the past 30 years, Constance Arnold has coached clients globally in the areas of relationships, wealth, and career. Her vast clinical background gives her extraordinary understanding of human behavior to accelerate manifestation. 
Every coaching client receives proven action plans to create change from the inside out. Constance will be right by your side. Talk to her today at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Everybody, I'm back and boy, are we in for a treat today. Um, and you know, I just have to read about this man. My very special guest is Simon T. Bailey. And the T, by the way, stands for terrific. Don't forget that. He is a speaker, author, life coach, an entrepreneur, a success magazine called Simon, one of the top 25 people that will help you reach your business and life goals. His viral video posted on Goldcast to Facebook has over 87 million views. Wow. Uh, he has worked with 1,800 organizations in 49 countries. He's the author of 10 books, including Release Your Brilliance, Releasing Leadership Brilliance, and Shift Your Brilliance. Uh, he is a powerful man. Very awesome. I've interviewed him twice. And remember, I said the T stands for terrific. So, Simon Terrific Bailey, welcome back. To the Thank Law of Attraction so Radio Network. Much. Thank you so much. <laughs> so good to be with you again. Well, I wanted to remind the listeners how I met you. You were speaking in Atlanta and uh, you were the guest speaker at DeKalb County, some kind of DeKalb County business function. And I was a, a breakout speaker. And so at lunch, you spoke and I'm like, who is that? And so, of course, after you finished, I harassed you and stood in line and uh, you agreed to be on my show. And uh, I've just loved you and your work ever since. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's so kind. So, Simon, you know what times we're living in. What do you feel like the spirit is really speaking through you to listeners all over the world today? Get ready for the restart. Get ready for the reboot. Get ready to reemerge. Do not allow a crisis to hijack your future. Wow. Let's unpack that. <laughs> what would that look like for listeners? Well, I think the first thing we have to realize, your self-talk is as important as your thought life. And sometimes you get worked up by a media that continues to sensationalize what is happening in the world and it creates more fear. But when you are mindful of your self-talk, the most important economy that you protect is the one between your ears. And then that impacts the words that come out of your mouth because that creates your future. Wow. That's powerful. Hey, okay, keep talking. What else? So when I'm mindful of my self-talk, then I also have to be mindful of if I'm now quarantined, sheltering in place, now with uh, individuals who normally I wouldn't see for eight to ten hours now, I'm in a house, you know, <laughs> and, <laughs> and the first thing you want to do is evaluate how is the relationship doing? <laughs> so... <laughs> So you have to be a little bit more forgiving because uh, here, here's the deal. A crisis doesn't come to break you. It comes to reveal who you are at the core. Mm -hmm. And when it reveals who you are at the core, you, you must say, how do I now empathize with my family, with my friends, uh, with individuals? How do I also sympathize and how do, how do I engage at a whole nother level where I understand it's not about me, but it's about we. Wow. So is that why my dog has been running from me, uh, hiding <laughs> under the bed, Simon? <laughs> She's not used to you me. Are, <laughs> you are in her space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So you said re-emerge. Yes. What does that mean? So when you look at a butterfly, when it's going through the cocoon stage, if the cocoon is restricted before its time, the fluid does not fill the wings of the butterfly that causes it to soar. And I submit that everyone listening to me right now, 
you are getting ready to reemerge and, and come out of the cocoon of fear, the cocoon of limitation, the cocoon of the world has changed, and you're getting ready to soar into another dimension that has been waiting for you to go through what some would call the dark night of the soul. And the dark night of the soul is when you go through a crisis and you don't know what you don't know, but you choose in the crisis to see the old in the new and the new in the old. And when you reemerge, you have a new fresh outlook, you have a new fresh conversation, you have a new fresh hope. So ultimately, a reemerging is understanding how do I have hope to cope no matter what I'm experiencing because I'm coming out of this. Yeah. And so we are being shifted and changed in our consciousness and in our thinking. Hmm. And so, and so you also mentioned to restart. What does that mean? So restarting is looking at everything that you've done before crisis Mm. and then begin to say, if I am to move forward, how do I think differently? So if a person is in business and perhaps your customers um, have now moved on to other things or your customers are not willing to do business with you just yet, how do you say, okay, how do I serve them, not just show up with my hand out? So I'll give you an example. Okay. I had my assistant call a company and cancel a membership that I was not using. Had not used it uh, on a 12-month cycle. Let's say I used it maybe three or four times, but not enough to justify the expense. So I got a call from that organization saying, you have been a valued member and we don't want to see you go. Did you know that we are willing to credit your account for X amount of days because we don't want to lose you as a member? Now, most organizations would have let me go by the wayside, Mm -hmm. but this organization found a way to say, wait a minute, we want to keep you. So when I talk about restarting, it's, okay, how do I think about what I've always done through a fresh lens, through a fresh perspective. Give you another example. Uh, A couple of guys owned a restaurant. Their restaurant is now closed by order of the governor, and this is their livelihood. So they said, what if we begin to provide comfort food that people can't get anywhere, and we make it available to them in a fresh way? We will deliver it. They are understanding how do they restart They're not waiting for something to be given to them. They're already saying, how do I create the future? Because the future is created in the present. And when you arrive into the future, you call it today. But all of your thinking yesterday meets you in the future and says, welcome, we've been waiting for you. So restarting the future is how am I showing up in my behavior, my habits, and my execution? Hmm, that's profound. And and so for people who are in business, Simon, online, you know, or maybe just in a particular city or country, they need to begin thinking about how can they serve or how can they really um, advertise their business in a different way? What would that look like for uh, entrepreneurs? I'm going to give you here. Here is the big idea. And I'm going to say it three times. Okay. Serving is the new selling. Serving is the new selling. Serving is the new selling. So point in case, my business, as you can imagine, has been decimated, right? I have every right to be upset. Like, oh my goodness, throw in the towel. Are you kidding me? I had not one, not two, not three, 10, one, zero, 10 contracts cancel in a seven day cycle. Okay. And that is enough to cause someone to just go over the deep end. Right. But I decided, let me regroup after I had my pity party, (laughs) cried, what was me? said, oh, Lord, I can't believe this has happened, you know, <laughs> bless, bless his little heart, right? So, so I decided, okay, I have a choice. I, I have a choice, I have a chance, and I can make a change. Oh, and I decided good. that I was going to serve by off- offering inspirational one to two minute 
uh, snackable videos on LinkedIn on a daily basis. That's the first thing. The second thing we decided to do was to offer a free webinar on how do you thrive through crisis? How do you lead through crisis at all levels for free? And not to promote, sell, or anything, but just to give in the spirit of service. And then the third thing we've done is we've sent text messages, we've picked up the phone, and we've called people to let them know, I'm thinking about you. Serving is the new selling. Oh, I love that. And so how did you walk through your fear? I mean, 10 contracts. How did you, when I say walk through that, I mean, after you realized that things were being canceled. I mean, were you like, oh my God, what am I going to do? What did that look like? You're walking that out for listeners. Well, after turning off Kenny Rogers, the gambler, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. You never count your money while you're sitting at the table. There'll be plenty of time for counting when the dealing's done. After you get through that song playing, (laughs) (laughs) the first practical thing you do is you sit down and you write down, what are my fixed expenses? What are my variable expenses? And here's why you start with getting a financial, doing a financial stress test. Once you understand your fixed expenses, you then say, can I call and negotiate with my mortgage company, with my car note, or whoever has my cow note, all those different expenses to see if you can get um, a forbearance type of situation going where you get a few few months reprieve. Okay. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Then all your variable expenses, what do you need to eliminate? And when I tell you crisis is a gift because I begin to eliminate subscriptions and things that I was not using, that was not a good stewardship of money. Okay. So that's the first thing you start with. Okay. If you overcome the fear, because the first thing fear does is it causes you to feel uh, and live in a scarcity mindset. So when you're in a scarcity mindset, you grab at anything and everything and say yes to it. And the reason you do that is because you fear that there won't be a better tomorrow. Okay. So, so that was that I had to just get fiscally sound. That was the first thing. Then the second thing I said, what are the assets that I have? Mm-hmm. the assets that drive value. And I'm looking at this from a business standpoint. Mm-hmm. So I have online product. I have books. I do coaching because the speaking side of the business is temporarily just put on hold. And I, I say that's very important because when something happens, how you language a situation determines how you show up every single day. All right. Then the next thing I did is I started to go to bed early, get a good seven to eight hours of sleep every night and got up and showered as if I was leaving my home office to go to a meeting. It is that mindset where you anticipate that something better is on the horizon. And what happens, you begin to vibe into the universe that something brilliant is about to happen to me in the darkest time, all because of what I'm putting out in the universe. And then then the other thing about business standpoint, we just started calling clients and we said, how can we serve you? How can we be of value to you? And a client said, oh my goodness, we can't believe you're doing this. I'm like, absolutely. Because if I serve you by selling you, what I recognize is that people don't uh, want a transactional relationship. Mm -hmm. They want a relationship that that's will because when you are just looking to see what you can get, that's a transaction. But when you're looking to see what you can give, that's a relationship. Oh, that's so profound. And for all of my entrepreneurs, because, you know, there's a lot of hustling online. You know that, Simon. Mm, And, you know, mm. people can and people um, can kind of feel that. I always say that uh, really alignment of who you are on the inside is the new hustle. Oh, yes. You know, that's my thinking. Okay, so let's go back to your routine because there's been a shift in all of our lives. Mm -hmm. And so you established a routine. So listen, so you go to bed early, then you get up and you shower and you look like you're going somewhere. So you're putting yourself in that vibration. What else should listeners do in order to, you know, establish a routine? 
What's the first thing you listen to? Do not not turn on the news. Because if you turn on the news the first thing in the morning, it derails the rest of your day. How you start the day determines the day. So I listen to a podcast or a meditation app or an audio book or a video that lifts me up and expands my thinking. It sets the tone for the day. Then I don't even go to email. I look to see who can I serve immediately. So mm. I might be texting somebody, but I'm also juicing at the same uh, at the same time. I'll cut up some celery with some fruit and some water, and 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 then after I drink that, I'm then ready for the day. My mind, my heart, my spirit is all all aligned. So in other words, when I understand how to restart and realign, I have. A internal um, internal alignment, thus creating external execution. So my head, my heart, and my hands are all on the same page from the inside out because I do it every single day. So when I hear the news that might might not be favorable and might uh, send the gremlins of fear to literally derail my day, I literally pull up a shield and say, absolutely not. I'm not going there because I know who I am. I know what I carry. And I change the channel on my tell a vision because life is not a remote control. You can change the channel on your television. I love that. Wow. So you nourish your body, soul and spirit in the morning. Oh, my goodness. Yes, because you cannot give what you don't have. You, you cannot be a spark if you are not a spark. It starts with you. Well, you know, um, listeners, I jokingly told uh, Simon, I'm like, Simon, you looking fine. You looking thin and and healthy and lean and mean. And he just start laughing. So if you juice and celery juice, I, I, I know why. So, yes. um, yeah. And, and yes. you know, and, and I do that also. So for for listeners, you know, what Simon is saying is profound about establishing a routine because it's a major shift when you're accustomed to going to work and and, and you are accustomed to just having a certain routine. Absolutely. And now you have to discipline yourself even more. And and what's so interesting, Constance, a part of this routine for me is because I went through a health scare. Hmm. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Hmm. Uh, my Gleason score was a, almost a, a seven and and almost a nine or 11 at times. And they wanted to do surgery. And I said, I'm too young. Uh, to do surgery because I still got some living to do. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get married again and get booed up. So you know we can't. <laughs> you know, process ain't gonna work for me. <laughs> and then I did my homework oh, and I talked to men who were older than me, seventy and eighty, who had mm-hmm. went through prostate, and it was just horrific. And then I came across some research that said change your diet, work yeah. out eat better, lose the weight. I had to do some pushbacks. I had to release the grease. I had to let it go because I love like hamburgers and french fries and all those things that I know for me are not as healthy for me. So I had to let those things go, but I had to do it every single day. Release the grease. I, that is so funny, you know. And so, Simon, what about people who may have been furloughed or downsized? Should they be like, praying for ideas or next steps, what would that look like for them? Every person that has been furloughed, laid off, or waiting for the other shoe to drop, get up every day as if you have some place to go. And that destination may be your home office. It might be a spare room. And I want you to get in front of your laptop And I want you to begin to say, how do I create me 2.0 and me 2.0 is what is the value of my brand? What is what is the portfolio that I bring to a place of business? What what what's what's my area of core brilliance? Um, What value have I driven in the past? What can I bring to an organization now? Go through the grieving process, detox that it happened. But guess what? If it happened, change is not your 
uh, your your foe changes your friend, and it's a brilliant opportunity to grow. So look at change and disruption and a setback as a gift to reinvent. Mm, that is so good. So so what about a listeners who they still have their job but they're working from home? Should they be thinking of powerful solutions for their companies when they do get go back and get together? What should their thinking be? Well, even before they go back to what the world will look like after we get through this, the mm-hmm. first thing they should do is how do I add value? How do I solve problems? How do I become how do I become the person that the company fights to keep? Okay, that's number one. Mm-hmm. Because you're always advancing thinking. Number two You have internal customers, you have external customers. How do you begin to solve problems for them by asking them, what is it that you're not getting and what is it that we can be providing for you? And when you begin to become a person that the company cannot live without, you also are setting yourself up as a SME subject matter expert and you are creating career insurance for yourself by simply going the extra inch. All right, here's the third thing is a paycheck is given to people who show up, but opportunities are given to people who work beyond what they are paid to do and think beyond what they're paid to do. So one of the things that everyone should be thinking about whenever we go back to an office per se, or if companies say, you know what? You can stay at home because we're going to save more money by giving up office space. Okay, then you decide, how do I become my most effective self at home? What other skills can I pick up without the company asking me to do it? Do it on your own. Make the investment in yourself because now micro content and micro learning is the new learning. So how do I learn in five and 10 minute snippets built over time? How do I now reskill myself before the company asks me to do it? Thus positioning yourself as the CEO of You Incorporated. I love that. My goodness. So I'm just asking you questions that my listeners have been asking me globally. And so what would you say to someone around scarcity, lack and no money? How do they deal with not having a paycheck coming in or just, you know, things that have happened in the stock market? Talk about money. So first of all, when you think of money, money needs to flow. And so when money is not flowing, Restaurants are closed. Businesses are not moving forward. So, for instance, let's say I go out to a restaurant and eat what I when I pay my bill that employs the hostess, the server, the dishwasher, the chef on and on. And then they have a mortgage to pay bills to pay on and on. So all of a sudden we stop. The first thing we have to begin to ask ourselves is how do I get my money flowing again? the money that I have, okay? That's number one. Number two, how do I look at all of my assets and say, how can these assets create revenue for me? So for example, we have within the last decade come out of the sharing economy, the ride share. If you have an extra bedroom, it's Airbnb. And you know, if you have some extra room in your pool, now there's an app that allows people to come and swim in your pool, right? So people are thinking differently about what apps do I have or or what assets do I have that can become something. Do an inventory of everything you have, everything. Put it on a sheet of paper and say, can I sell it or can it become something because you need money to flow? Okay. then the third thing is um, and this is the most important question people can ask themselves. What problem have I been created to solve? Mm -hmm. What problem have I been created to solve? Because money flows towards solutions. So when I begin to think about that question, there are three other questions behind what problem have I been created to solve? And that is, uh, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? What would I do if no one paid me to do it? What makes me 
come alive? And I know those questions might sound counterintuitive, but if you only do something for money, you will do it for a minute. You won't do it for life. So when I want money to flow and I want to move from scarcity to abundance, I must begin to give away what I want to attract. I must begin to sow for it, pay it forward. Um, so even if I looked at, look at my assets, the other thing that I want you to consider is go and find a nonprofit in your area that is helping the least, the last, the lost, helping people who are down on their luck, who have lost their job, who don't know where their next meal is coming from, who may be homeless. This organization that is truly helping those that have been so impacted, worse than you. Yeah. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to write a check to that organization. It might be $20. It might be $50. But just the fact that you gave to somebody else who could do nothing for you, you're now setting in motion the laws of the universe, the laws of reciprocity that what goes around comes around. The other thing I want you to think about is I want you to think about somebody else that needs a job, somebody else that needs a breakthrough. And I want you to begin to make a call on their behalf to help them get what they want so that you can set in motion something that is about to happen to you. Well, that's so good. You know, and I just think during times like this, Simon, that giving puts mm-hmm. the whole, you know, law of circulation working. And a lot of people ho- are holding on so tightly. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, a, a closed fist is never full, but an open hand is always full. Who can you open and care and share and let them know they matter? So good. You know, talk a little bit about visualization. What What should people be seeing in their own mind? What images should they be thinking and meditating on about, you know, their future, et cetera, instead of just being enmeshed in, oh, my God, what am I going to do, et cetera? Begin to create a storyboard of you 2.0, me 2.0, that pulls together photos, and you can do this digitally, of the happiest times in your life, happiest times ever, when you were on top of your game, when you spent time with family, friends, loved ones, when you were just coming from a place of joy, and begin to reflect and review and renew yourself through visualizing and reliving those moments of happiness. What happens is when you relive moments of happiness, it begins to tap into your unconscious uh, spirit to connect you back to this moment in time when you're in flow. And if you're going to create the future, you must say, when I was in flow, I was happy. When I was happy, I found my joy. And when I was living in joy, I found my people. Now, if I am not coming from a place of joy, I have to examine who is in my life because whoever has your ear has your life, right? Then I have to begin to say, if I'm going to see the new me, I must understand that people don't see me as I am. They see me as they are. So I must begin to renew myself in the happiness and the joy of where I've been, but then begin to forecast and become your own internal futurist of where you're going by attaching the picture of your destiny. Oh, that's good. I'm getting ready to get personal now, uh, Simon. Uh, you know, you said you were you were you, you were going to get married again, and you were going to get booed up again. So, for my international listeners, y'all Google that to see what booed up means. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> and so have you been like using your own imagination already seeing you happily married again, et cetera, using the practice that you just shared? I already see myself walking down the aisle. I am in an amazing tux, white jacket, tailor made, beautiful uh, black bow tie with a white shirt. And I am looking Godiva fine. <laughs> and I... <laughs> Ah, ah, 
And you know what? It's going to happen one day. But here's what I, re- I realize. Okay. And here, here's straight talk. I will not be able to find the woman that I believe I am supposed to have until I become the man she needs me to be. Mm. So, so when I begin to deal with the little boy in me to really deal with my issues. So I've been, I've been going through counseling and seeing a therapist because sometimes what I recognize uh, men, we get into relationships and we are, we want to be in charge and we want to act like we're all that. And we come off very heavy and hard. It's because we haven't dealt with our mama issues. So what I recognize I've got to deal with and, and have dealt with my mama issues so that when I meet the queen, I am ready to be her king and not act like a reject because here she is taken off and I'm trying to hold her back because I haven't dealt with my unfinished business. You follow me? I get, I get you. You know, that's so powerful. I was just uh, talking to someone uh, in a situation like that. And uh, the man really cannot deal with the powerful light that she is. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, you know, you're so right. on. so for all of my male listeners and 49% of my listeners are male you know, what Simon is saying is really powerful. You know, you really be when you go to counseling or therapy, you become the thing that you want to attract. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for letting me get in your business a little bit. It's all good. It's all good. I'm an open book. I keep it real. (laughs) So, So talk about affirmations or what should people be saying or verbally speaking Uh, during this crisis, what would you suggest to listeners? I am happy, I am healthy, and I am whole. And whole, W-H-O-L-E, is so important because a crisis unlocks traumas or treasures. Mm. So, So when I say I am happy, healthy, and whole, I'm unlocking the treasure of becoming a better version of myself than I was before. Uh, And knowing that trauma is lurking there in my unconscious, I'm able to compartmentalize it and recognize it will stir up and trigger yesterday and things that I overcame. So affirming to myself that I am happy, healthy, and whole is the best prescription of self-care when you go through crisis. Because what you are seeing, um, if language is the software of the mind, what you're simply saying, I am giving a self-prescription to my head, my heart, my hands, my central nervous system, saying this is how we roll. This is what we are going to do when faced with bad news. We are going to maintain happiness. So that doesn't mean I'm smiling every day. Yeah. It means I'm simply content where I am. I'm not worried about the future because worry slows down the brain and doesn't create neural genesis, which is a process of growing neurons, which grows the brain. So when I say I'm healthy, happy, and whole, I recognize that I don't think with my brain. I think with my mind, and my mind is in my heart. Okay. That's very, very, very powerful. And, and so a crisis comes and it reveals who we are. Mm-hmm. And so we shouldn't be afraid of it. So a lot of stuff may be coming up in people's lives. So this is a great time for them to really deal with all of the stuff that's coming up. Absolutely. And for those around you who at times may appear to be negative Invite them to join you on a journey of rephrasing what they are experiencing by watching Mm -hmm. you as an example, by listening to you, by leaning into you. Hmm. That's something. And then lastly, what is God saying or what is spirit saying or how should people be relating and opening up themselves to God? So God believes in you. 
he is waiting for you to believe that he believes in you. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you something that okay. I put in my journal uh, yesterday. The other thing, other practice that I do that's really helped me is the power of um, being able to go to the scriptures just as a, a, a reference point, as a foundational point to really understand these times. And so in my meditation, um, it says, give my entire attention to what God is doing right now. Mm. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things may come up when the time comes. And that is from Matthew 634 in the Message Bible. And what I loved, it, and it just so blessed me, give my entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen. See, what fear does, fear works you up to think that something is going to happen and that may not happen. See, you've invested all of this emotional energy and God has said, I got you. Mm. That's very powerful. And, you know, I know a lot of my uh, listeners, you may have your own practice, but like Simon, I go to scriptures and sometimes I just meditate meditate on think of it ponder it in my mind uh, over and over and over again so you know you have just shared some powerful information and i'm just going to strongly encourage your listeners to listen to this over and over and you're living this time and i can tell this is this is my life this is who i am and listen i i, I want to get the recording myself so i can see what i see <laughs> I'll make sure that I'll send a link to you and Melissa and tag you in it so that that you can uh, hear what you said. So so tell listeners about your website. How can they get your your books and how can they contact you for coaching and and other services that you might be offering? Just go to Simon T. T. Like terrific Bailey (laughs) dot com. And everything is right there. You can engage in our coaching. How do you take control of your life? How do you elevate your career? Everything is right there. Join our Spark Nation community where I mentor uh, on a monthly basis for an hour to two people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly on social media, you can follow me at Simon T. Bailey. You know, I'm so glad that we reconnected because... You know, you you really blessed me today. You you really inspired me. You really touched me. And I know that my listeners feel the same way. And I thank God for you. Oh, Constance, thank you for this opportunity. I so appreciate and value who you are and the difference you're making in the world. Thank you. And invite me to your wedding. But I got to make sure I have something really sharp and sharp. <laughs> Something, something sharp and chic to fly down to Florida, wherever it's going to be. So uh, you, oh you, you deserve the best. So everybody, uh, uh, visit Simon's website and uh, take advantage of advantage of all of his services. Get his books. I have several of his books. They are really awesome. And uh, make sure you visit my website, fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Share this show uh, with one of your friends, with your co-workers, with your family. And as I say every week, I want you to think, feel, and say that something good is going to happen to me and through me this week for others. Make it a great week. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com.